Edelweiss, Edelweiss, every morning greet me. Snow and white, clean and bright, you look happy to meet me. Most important thing I gotta tell what happened with me. And every Holocaust survivor has a story. Only, only those six million who was perished, they can tell their story. If we don't talk about it, if it's forgotten, it can happen again. Yeah, 因为你随时都会被杀掉 for a long time, I was not able to talk about the Holocaust. Uh, I was nine years old. I was in a concentration camp, and I was liberated. Uh, I was three days in Auschwitz and a couple months in Ravensbrück, and then in Bergen-Belsen, I was liberated in April 15, 1945. Left my school, had a lot of friends, Christian friends, Jewish friends, there was no difference. And everything changed once Hitler marched into Austria. That was the end of my childhood, the way I knew it.一看灯笼一个灯笼就是说是空气警报一起就是两个挂了就是紧急警报三个就是日本人已经到了天上了半夜三更就是满街都是全部都出来了但有些呢就是平民的那个防空洞平民的防空洞呢很苦里面一股味
and uh, whoever could fit in a one room apartment. And <clears throat> everything was okay till 1944 October when the Arrow Cross and the SS disregarded the Swedish flag and the protection and they came to take my mother. So the SS said, let's go out because you have to prove that the child is less than a year old. So I was a year and a week old and the SS was halfway out the door, but the Arrow Cross was dragging her down to Margaret uh, Bridge to register. And then we haven't seen her for nine months. I mean, I know it from stories told to me. My mother was like your mother, never spoke about it, hardly ever. Yeah, 那么我们几个孩子，呃，连我母亲都在这个防空洞里面，我母亲得白喉，都是很很严重的传染病，哎，所以都能够存活下来，非常幸运。And in Hungary, the Arrow Cross take over. They were worse than the Germans, and they killed people on the spot. They shot many Jews in the Danube River. They were horrible. I know what was happening, and a crystal night, they came into our home, arrested my father, who ended up in the Holocaust concentration camp, took whatever they wanted. And my mother realized that she had to save her children. I remember the day I left, it was March 13, 1939. And we were at the train station. We were in a sealed compartment. The windows tightly closed. I'm inside. My mother is outside. For four agonizing hours, the train stood there. I couldn't step away from the window. I was afraid if I step away, I would lose her forever. <laughs> I know I didn't go through the horrors of the camps, but I think any child was torn away, it's not easy. And April the 2nd was the first kinder Dutch boat arriving in England until just before war broke out. Ten months, ten thousand children were saved. Ninety percent of all those children never saw their parents again. Yeah, and Kanko Yehan, Yehan take the Japanian Kang and Dang Jong is a quarter yes, take a singing dan than the reason. Now Dana Day to woman the chat to woman girl and those you those 都是在這個精神上都是受到了很大的很大的損傷吧,就是。I never speak about the Holocaust. I dream about it. I cry in my night when I sleep 
only the past uh, 10 years, I'm 101, you know. Uh, only about the te past 10 years I speak about it. And I don't know why I get very emotional, I cry, because not just what I say, but I see what happened next to me. Terrible. Uh, one day I was thinking, you know, one and a half million children perished in the Holocaust, and I'm alive. There must be a reason. So when my children started to go full time to school, I started to volunteer. I just felt I have to give something back to society because there must be a reason why I'm alive. So I always said it's my mother's strength because after Crystal died, my mother knew she has to save her children.那像我们中国的来讲，那个中日战争的时候，日本人杀了很多中国人，那在犹太人来讲呢，他们的集中营里面是不管小孩、大人、男的、女的，都都一律的杀。啊，了解了一些这个希特勒啊，大批的杀害
呃，我听说在金陵女大啊，把女对吧？金陵女大的女学生，那那个，当然，南京大屠杀的时候，这些人也免免不了秒被被那个什么被残害，嗯、啊，但是呢，这个犹太人、犹太牧师啊，犹太人呢，呃，帮了帮了很多的忙，救了很多的中国人啊，这些都是非常非常让人值得尊尊敬的。啊，值得值得，呃，让大家，呃，知道的。这，都称之为色目人。色目人呢，是比汉民族、比其他的呃胡人都要来的高级。啊，当然，我另外加一点，就是在第二次世界大战的时候，啊。纳粹，呃，也这个德国人呢，呃，以屠杀，呃，犹太人为他们的基本国策，啊、呃，中国。我在重庆就听说，好像那个希特勒杀屠杀犹太人，但是好像美国不接受，上海接受了。所以应该讲，犹太人跟我们上海人是很要好。颠沛流离，没有没有人收留他们。难民，犹太的难民，他们在那个摩西会堂，两万多人。那个时候呢，上海人非常的友好，他们那个给他们送吃的呀，给他们一些个生活上的帮助。所以呢，在我的印象当中，我就知道，哎，中国的上海人跟犹太人，他们是有很深厚的友谊。我摘录了一段话啊，就是一九九三年十月，那个以色列的总理拉宾，他他到摩西会堂呃参观的时候，他给刘延部长他亲笔写了，在犹太人被纳粹屠杀、驱赶而流浪于世界的时候，犹太人得到了上海人民的庇护。我和犹太人民和以色列政府从内心的深处感谢你们的帮助。所以我也很感动，我觉得中国人和犹太人是有一深厚的呃这个渊源的。We want to capture the memory. We want to pass on their narrative to the next generation.、Uh, especially nowadays, sometimes there are like revisionists who are people downplay or even deny what happened. We're bringing together two groups who have had very little contact, probably due to language and culture. However, they both have a shared experience of the horrendous aspects of war, genocide, and discrimination. Our, our mission here is to educate students and the community about the history of the Holocaust and its ramifications up through till today. So that's what today's about. It's really just sharing each other's stories and learning from each other,、uh, and hopefully hearing things that we didn't know to help us learn more about ourselves. Go up to each kiosk. We'll try to mix the groups together and and look at what's there. Oh, they're not just thinking of God. And her question is, you all trust God? Yes. <laughs> But our enemies don't trust the same God. They believe in a different God. 他他们的矛盾就在于他们都信，但是信的是不一样的，所以他们有还是有这个矛盾。耶，刚才我是基督徒，啊，是那个基督徒。Yes. We were a whole group. They, you know, they got all these children together, organized, and we took a ship over to England. Go to four countries. You don't know the language.、Mm. You don't know who's going to take care of you.、Mm. And you always worry what happened to the ones you left behind.、Mm. Every time they had to go and sneak out at night to go find people they could trust, who would give them a potato or a, a vegetable or a piece of bread or something to eat. <laughs> Hitler 打这个这个，瑞士打打他们那个犹太人嘛。他那为什么要跟他们战争呢？呃、uh, ，She asked me like, why why the war started. Do you know that? 
was Hitler wanted to get rid of all the Jews. Um, why? Do you know exactly why Hitler wanted to Because he wanted to have an Aryan nation which, which was like German, blonde hair, blue eyes. He wanted to of it is that I had blue eyes mm -hmm. and when I was younger I, I had blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> they took the Jews in 1944 from Hungary to a ghetto. We, I'm coming from six children. And my father, my, I can't even talk about it. I never talk even to my children about it. They killed my father, my sister, in our But it's good to talk about it. Come here. Come here. It's good. You get it out. You don't hold it in. I don't talk about it. But it's good to talk about it. It brings relief. I don't know. It brings You mean the whole world, right? Yes. Nobody, said, nobody yeah. said anything. Nobody said, nobody came out to say that what the Germans did was wrong. Uh -huh. So the people just, are scary. And so scary. the Germans said, well, nobody said. Look, we want outside. We, we want with the striped dress, no hair, with the wooden shoes. We went all day long outside with the shovel just throwing sand. We didn't do anything. Yeah, and also when my mom is so very little, she still remembers has some, some memories that happened on that time. At that time, she was four years old. Oh, oh, all so right. Four years old. She's a muscle. Yeah, so she's at 85 right now. Oh, my age. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so she she looks wonderful. Yeah. 对重庆的轰炸非常的残忍，那重庆那个时候就，so uh in Chongqing, so the Japanese armies they bomb like every day and uh they have to hide in caves and one time uh the gate of the cave crashed during bombing so over two thousand Chinese people uh died in the cave Tw uh, sorry twenty thousand Chinese people died so, uh, luckily she and her mother escaped from that cave. 逃出来了，躲过了，躲过了没有死掉，躲过了一劫。但是在我的印象当中，我对这个八年抗战当中的印象非常的深刻，因为我们常常是在那个残忍的行为。For the whole eight years, they were living in horror because after the bombing, they see like different body parts hanging up in the air, like arms, head. So, um, so like she was very young, but she saw all those like things of terror. So she hoped like everybody can, the whole world can unite together. Thank you so much for sharing your story. So uh, she was there a little at that time. So uh, in Chongqing, there's like a mountain um, across the um, where to. Uh, where she lives, so they use a Latin to alert people. So one Latin is like this alarm is on, then two Latin is very urgent, and three Latin means the airplane is coming. So uh, every time like she saw the plane came really fast, and they felt like really angry, like they can't do anything to, um, to get the plane down. <laughs> So they came here for different purposes, but they all share the common memory of the Second World War, the Sino-Japanese War. Um, so a lot of them still talk about the impacts, but they may not fully aware on uh, how that changed their life. So through this project of sharing and communicating with um, especially other ethnic groups, hopefully they can make sense of what um, happened to them uh, and also understand uh, in the larger um, landscape that was the other people in the rest of the world went through during World War II. It's very interesting to read and to hear the, the stories and what uh, 
went on between what the Japanese did to the Chinese is absolutely horrendous. And we all survived, thank we're the lucky ones. I had no idea that the bombings that these ladies spoke about in, in China, that they had the horrors that they had to hide from, was similar to the stories that I heard from Anita about the Blitzkrieg bombings in London. Right. So that the same thing was going on in China as in London. I did not know that, and I am really uh, surprised, and um, I just learned, some, learned something. It doesn't make any difference who you are being prosecuted either for nationality or religion, it's the same. You suffer the same in different ways, but the outcome is the same. And this is what we're here for, to see that it should never happen again, that we have to speak up if something happens. If more people would have spoke up, maybe it wouldn't have happened. But we might be different culture, but the same experience. But it's happening all over the world, all over again. It is terribly frightening. And nobody is, the governments really are not doing anything against it. In this country, the demonstration in Charlottesville, and we're told, well, there's good and bad on both sides. Crazy, absolutely insane. I find if the climate is right, it can happen anywhere. Right. To be honest, we somehow experience discrimination in ways like we travel in the subway and in class. But I think things getting better. <laughs> Uh, because the, the senior center they went to used to be uh, predominantly uh, for Jewish people, so sometimes it feels like there is a little bit of uh, conflict or attitude towards Chinese people, so that's her feeling. <laughs> well, education is the most important thing. If you educate people what's happening and make them realize what's right, what's wrong, it's all one Which is the mission of this place, mm -hmm. yeah. is education about what happened to one group or various groups and educate that it can happen to any minority and therefore all minorities should help each other. It's hate, which is the worst thing. And children are taught that. They begin at a very young age and they teach them that and this is what they believe. When the Chinese first immigrated to America, they had the same experience as the Jews as a minority in all different countries. The Chinese were not welcome here. So there's a history of similarity on the treatment of minorities, if the minorities that are different. Well, they were not uh, given quotas. They were not allowed into the country, really, until the 60s when they changed the immigration laws. I mean, I wasn't here, but I'm sure because people could not dis uh, tell the difference between Japanese and Chinese, I'm sure there was a lot of discrimination in this country during the Second World War. I think uh, because I was a student in, in QCC, uh, a lot of my class, we have uh, the part of our project include the Holocaust topic and we visit the Holocaust Center and we visit the gallery show and we visit, we have visited the um, Holocaust survivor several times. That is really important to our generation to experience that and be educated in this way. I think it's very, for me, it's very nice to have the experience to know the history about that. I am so frightened of this country today and you see it in England, you see it in Germany, you see it in France. 
And look at, look at uh, Brexit in England. They don't want immigrants to come in. And this country, the right wing in this country, the anti-Semitism, the anti-black, the anti-Muslim, it can very, very well happen again. I mean, there's plenty. We're sitting in a room surrounded by examples of genocides around the world. Um, you read what's going on in, in, uh, in countries where they're uh, massacring people. Uh, the kind of organized uh, uh, annihilation, extermination of what the Germans did to the Jews, unlikely to ever happen again because the world is too uh, organized, the world is too uh, progressed to the point where you can't hide horrible information for very long. So there's still a lot of terrible things, but something like the systematic killing of six million Jews and, and perhaps five million others uh, is unlikely to occur again. Well, there's plenty going on all over the world. This wouldn't have so many refugees if it wouldn't be. It's, it, it's, I don't understand why people can't respect each other. So, uh, if the leader is true and good, 那这个战争呢，呃，多半是容易发生。如果呃，领导人主要是为了老百姓啊，为了全国，或甚至于进一步为了全世界的和平，他愿意放弃他的雄才大略啊，那么这样子呢，呃，老百姓才能安居乐业。When you open the television in the morning to listen to the news, it, it, it's there. First they went to the churches, the schools. Then in Pittsburgh, recently, I opened the TV this morning and they were talking about Squirrel Hill and right away I looked up because my nephew used to live there, two blocks from the synagogue. Of course it hits you, and it happened. So it's going to happen. It is happening. It is happening now. So it's not a question, can it happen again? It is happening. It's here. And I don't know if anybody can do anything to stop it. And that's what Hitler did. He promised them. And the climate was right. He promised them a better world. But young people survive that you've got to make a life for yourself, and you've got to care about other people. We are all looking for the same thing, and we're, no matter what your background, we're all the same, we're all looking for the same thing, so just respect other people people and life will be much easier. What I hope my health is good. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> because I'm now is 90 years old. So I how to know tomorrow. <laughs> Nobody knows. And I want people to know about good people who helped us and people and it really happened. And it's living proof because I am here. We have to respect each other and, and enjoy the differences. That makes life much more interesting. When my kids were growing up, everybody was welcomed in our home. There was no different. And I hope that the next generation will make a better job. <laughs> mm, I feel very free. <laughs>